Değerli Esport izleyenleri, 3 Saniye programına hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Bugün yanımda Galatasaray kadın basketbol takımının oyuncusu ve aynı zamanda WNBA oyuncusu Bria Hartley var. Hello Bria, welcome. Thank you. We can't talk in Turkish, right? No. <laughs> I'm not that good, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. We, we, can, we can continue with English. How are you? I'm good. How is it going? It's good. Um, the season's been going really well for us. Um, I think we came in this year, we weren't really sure what to expect. And now we've, been, we've yeah. been second in the league, so I think we're really happy. I'm so excited because you're my first female <laughs> guest. Like, it's, it's really, it's going to be one of my best shows, I think, <laughs> I assume. Um, so, shall we start with your childhood, with your family, mm -hmm. with the high school, with UConn? <laughs> so, your father, Dennis Hartley, is a former prof professional boxer. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you grew up with an athlete. I mean, the, the theme of the family was sports, right? Definitely. I, mean, um, I had my older brother, too. He played sports. And then uh, my dad just kind of always went to the boxing gym. So since I was like little, he just took me to the boxing gym with him and everything. But because I was his little girl, he never let me box. But <laughs> I was always there and like I would like work out with like some of the guys and stuff there and mm -hmm. then just like. But you started basketball with two of your older brothers. Mm -hmm. They were pushing you to play basketball. Yeah. Am I right? How did it start? How that journey started? Uh, I think it was just kind of like they played all the time and I was just like the little one like following <laughs> them around. So then. Uh, My brother would always just like go out there and play with me like we had a hoop in our driveway and then eventually I just started picking up like different sports and any sport that he played I played. <laughs> so you you picked up the basketball. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, during the high school you went to the North Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you were playing basketball over there and then after the Yukon mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, journey starts. So can you explain how was the high school and college? Uh, high school was fun. I think high school was just kind of You're young, kind of figuring out mm -hmm. what you want to do, and you just love playing the sport, so that's what I did. And then ev eventually I just started to get really good, and college coaches started recruiting me. Um, and then UConn came into picture, and I think when I met yeah. uh, the coaches and stuff there, I was just like really excited. And when I went to visit the school, I knew like that's where I wanted to go. But, but the UConn is known as, I'm going to give my audience the names of the WNBA players <laughs> who were graduated from UConn as Sue Bird. Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore, Swin Cash, Stephanie Dawson, Brianna Stewart, uh, Kia, uh, Kia, right? Yeah. Kia Stokes, Bria Hartley. <laughs> so many NBA, like it's like a factory of WNBA, the yeah. UConn. So can you explain me how was the system of basketball over there? It was really good. Um, when you go there and play, like everyone, like growing up, if you're a little girl, you probably watch UConn play and you dream mm -hmm. of going there. Um, I think the coaching staff there does a really good job of just like, preparing their players and making sure their players get better every year. But how do they pre prepare, especially women players? Um, I mean, what is the magic of it? Honestly, it's hard. I think like mentally, um, like he, he pushes you, Coach Ariyama, he, he pushes you like to limits. There's times like, honestly, there's times where you're going through practices, you want to cry, but really? he just pushes you to be better. He pushes you to expect more of yourself. So I think that's one of the reasons you see a lot of UConn players go on to play in the WNBA is just because, uh, Just like we, we work really hard, we're really committed, we're really disciplined, and I think you learn that throughout your whole career there. So then when you get to the next level, you can just carry that with you yeah, as well. Yeah, the discipline, I mean, I think the yeah. key. Um, yesterday when I posted on my social <laughs> media, you know, what do you want me to ask to Bria <laughs> Hartley, so many people were asking about UConn, the system of UConn, and they, they're very curious about the system and how is the program for you guys, you girls, especially you girls that how is the education system mm -hmm. with the basketball? That's why I'm asking. Yeah, so um, one, there's like standards for like your grades, like you have to get a certain grade point average to play. And I think they do a good job when you come in as a freshman, they um, set you up with academic advisors and everything to kind of balance your schedule in basketball. It's definitely not easy, because I know when you first get there, you have like 6 a.m. workouts, and then sometimes I would have 6 a.m. workouts, then class at eight, Then I'm resting, we play like uh, for a couple hours, uh, pick up, and then later you, you still have more classes or you have study hall. Wow. But um, I think when you first come in as a freshman, they kind of prepare you and they kind of help you a little bit with your schedule. And then mm -hmm. as you get older, you can adjust it the way you see fit you or see. what you need. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a learning process. Um, but their standard is really high and they're gonna continue to push you every year. That is, that's really good. 
especially for an athlete or for someone who wants to become as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie Dawson is <laughs> is your um, friend. Yes. <laughs> and are you girls still friends? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because <laughs> I, I told you, I watched many interviews and you were actually doing an interview as a reporter <laughs> oh, with yeah. her. That, that, I remember that, that. You remember that? Yes. And then, and then she was like, I don't want to talk now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, how was your friendship? Because one, uh, during that one interview, she was saying that we had this competition mm -hmm. between me and her. Mm -hmm. You know, one year she was good, the other year I was better, <laughs> she was good, I was good. And, but the last year when we were playing together in UConn, mm -hmm. we were both okay. good and then we were, we were a good match together mm -hmm. inside of the team. But how do you describe her? Um, Steph, she's like fun, she's goofy, so... Um from day one, I always just like love being around her. We had a good time, but I think as an athlete in general, like especially you go to a school like UConn, you're competitive. So like we yeah. always were like competing against one another. But I think it was good because we also pushed one another. So it's like we we're able to push each other. Sometimes she gets on my nerves. Sometimes I get on her nerves. But I always say like our relationship is really like sisters. Like we'll fight or whatever, but then at the end of the day, we're still like the best of friends. And even. Now it's like 10 years later, we're still really yeah. good friends. Because <laughs> in WNBA, you two are very strong and powerful. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was curious about it. And there's this White House moment oh, yeah. <laughs> with Obama, with the president. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie fell down, fell out from the <laughs> yes. stage, right? Yes. She didn't do it on purpose, no, I'm assuming. No. <laughs> okay, all right. Because she was very embarrassed after <laughs> that scene. And you, I think UConn was the first um, university in the history who visited the White House, I mean, when Obama was there. Yeah, yeah. Am I right or am I? Uh, I think uh, Because Obama your interview there. with Washington Mystics, Stephanie was saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I think when Obama was there, it was pretty much always UConn that went to visit. <laughs> okay, why? Uh, so it's like whoever wins the national championship normally mm -hmm. goes. So then those few oh, years we kept you <laughs> kept okay. winning. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How was the White House? It was good. That was definitely a really fun experience, especially uh, with Barack Obama in there. So I think that was yeah. really cool for him to like just take the time to see us and meet us. And uh, uh, I think it's definitely one of the coolest experiences for me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can I can imagine that. But I asked you about Stephanie Dawson because. I will I will I want to talk about this topic with you. You are a female in this industry and there you're playing with females mm -hmm. and you're playing all the, with all the ladies. Do you feel that there is a more competition between females more than men? Men? Um I don't know. I think uh in recent years I think uh we do a good job of supporting one another. I think if you look um Everything's kind of changing where everyone's just uh, about women's empowerment and women in sports. And I know especially uh, in the WNBA, we've been trying to negotiate better contracts for women I and, know. and then different things like that. So I think uh, in more recent years, we did a good job of just supporting one another. I think, I mean... It's not a... It's not. It's the same kind. Yeah, of I think we're all me. fighting for the same thing. We're fighting for the the future of women's basketball. So it's like yeah. we've made strides from say 20 years ago, where there wasn't really a WNBA or a league in the mm -hmm. states. Now there's young girls. At least they have a league to look to and to aspire to play in. Because yeah. when I was really little, the WNBA was really just getting started. So I didn't watch it as much. Yeah. And now you're one of the idol yeah. of the young <laughs> ladies. And um, so let's start after UConn. You were drafted by Seattle Storm, mm -hmm. but traded to Washington. Washington yeah. yeah, how how was that? Uh, that was, I mean, there was a lot going on. So I think uh, I got up from the table, they called my name to get drafted, but then um, Were my you coach, expecting that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my coach kind of whispered in my ear because I was like, oh, coach, I'm going to play with Sue. And then he was like, no, there might be a trade. So I kind of had a warning uh, before I went, I went up to the stage. And then um, it's like after you get drafted, they make you go to the back and go through like a whole like media uh -huh. tunnel or mm -hmm. whatever. Make and so. um, I guess Steph was on the phone with the coach from D.C. and she was like, Bria, did you hear? I'm like, what? <laughs> so then finally they're saying I was getting traded to, to Washington. But that was really special, too, because Steph was already drafted yeah. there right before me. Yeah. And normally you've never seen like two players, players. from the same school go UConn. to the yeah. same WNBA team. So that was a re really, really special moment, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I actually watched that interview, <laughs> too. Yeah, it's, it's special, too. And um, after you went to Unica uh, Sopron. Yes. To, to Hung Hungary, Hungary, right? Yes. Yeah, how was that journey? Because it was your first overseas mm -hmm. year. Uh, it, was, it was definitely an adjustment. Um, I think just in general, going to Europe was an adjustment if you've never been over there for that long period of time. 
being away from like family and everything yeah. was it was definitely tough but um overall i think it was definitely a really good experience uh i had a really good season there and i think it helped prepare me um i just worked on focusing on basketball focused on eating right and just being a uh, more of a professional. I think it's like your first step really mm -hmm. coming into a professional athlete. So um, their program was great and I think they definitely helped me grow as a player. Now people who are watching, maybe they don't know the system and the schedule of WNBA with mm -hmm. the overseas. Can you explain us about um, that? So for us, it's uh, the overseas schedule is normally from like October to about April, April. May, depending on mm -hmm. what country you play in. And then WNBA starts. So I think this year training camp starts April 26th. Yeah. And then it goes until like September or October, depending on how far you make it. So it's it's really no break. So I think last year uh, we won the championship with uh, Fenerbahce and I went home on May 16th. And my first WNBA game was May 24th. So this it, year it just, is May 16th against Sparks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I looked for that too. So now it's another year. But um, yeah, it's not really much time off. But I think when you're you have the schedule we have, you really have to love basketball and love playing it. Yeah. And so I think. Yeah. I'd rather be going back and forth playing than sitting at home and not doing anything. Yeah. And I'll ask this for my follower that she, he wants me to ask you. Has she had any time to rest? Because <laughs> she is playing in WNBA on summer. Do you have? Uh, it depends. Uh, well, last year in New York, we ended somewhat early because we didn't make the playoffs. I ended like September 8th, and then I came over here October 6th. So I had about a month. Um, but most of the time, no, I try to <laughs> get his uh, rest when I have my days off. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like, if I have a few days, just kind of stay yeah. away from basketball. Don't even touch a basketball <laughs> just as, like, a mental cleanse. But um, I don't know. I love playing, and I, I'll continue to love playing yeah. for now. Um, I'm sure when I'm done playing, no, I'm just going to be, like, I don't want to see a gym. I don't want to see You anything. should be a reporter. I'm <laughs> telling you. I watched your interview. <laughs> Stick with the basketball. <laughs> right. That's all I'm saying. But first overseas year was with um, Sopron. And after you still playing for Washington Mystics, you mm -hmm. came to Mer Mersin, mm -hmm. to Turkey. Yeah. How, how was your first experience here in Turkey? Uh, uh, it Were was you cool. expecting... I didn't really know what to expect. I heard about like some of my friends who played in Turkey, so that was my f my first time. It was a little different. I feel like in Mersin, at least compared to Istanbul, it's uh, not as kind of summery. Yeah, it's summery. Yeah. The the weather's nice. Uh, I think it was harder to find people who spoke English. So I think that's when I really had to okay. work on my Turkish to like <laughs> go to a restaurant or even to tell a taxi driver like where to go. What do you go. say? What do you say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like I think. One thing I know is that I would say, like, the place I live was, like, you part, uh -huh. like, in English. But then I would tell the taxi drivers, and they would never understand me. And then they're like, oh, ooh part. And I was like, <laughs> it's the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> but okay. I definitely learned, like, certain things. Like, I live in C block, but I'm, like, J block. Or, uh -huh. like, do salsa, like, to tell the taxi driver where okay. to go. But, um... And I could yeah. probably order food. That's really it. Ben bir tane bundan alabilir miyim? Yeah, exactly. Or hesap alabilir miyim? Hesap alabilir miyim? That's the most word right. <laughs> you say. All right. And Mersin, and then after New York Liberty. Mm -hmm. After Washington, how was New York Liberty? I mean, playing in that team, new team for you. Yeah. Um, from where you are. I think, I mean, I love playing in Washington, but I was definitely happy to go to Liberty. I just had my son. And then New York yeah. is home for me, so I had um, a lot more family there, a lot you more people to help. There, you went there two weeks after you gave a birth to Bryson, right? Well, I was home in New York already, and okay. I got traded two weeks mm -hmm. after, but mm -hmm. our season didn't start till yeah. May. But yeah, um, I think I started working out with the, the Liberty coaches probably in March, so maybe mm -hmm. like six weeks after I had Bryson. Wow. So um, I just knew I wanted to come back and play, and our first game was May... 14th, I think. But that how were you physically and mentally? Um, I think time? I was okay. I, like I said, I was lucky because I had my parents there. They were like really, really helpful. My dad would like, it'd be me, my dad, and Bryson. We would drive to uh, the gym or whatever. Then he would drive back with me, <laughs> just make sure like I wasn't too tired. But um, it was it was tough at first for sure, just kind of mm -hmm. adjusting. But I think I was just really focused on what I had to do and making sure, sure I was back for the season. Yeah, and then you came to Fenerbahce. <laughs> And now you're in Galatasaray. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about that? So how was your year last year with mm -hmm. Fenerbahce? Uh, it was great last year. Um, I thought we did pretty well. That was 
kind of my first time on a big club in in Istanbul. In Istanbul. So, um, I mean, everyone knows the history of Fenerbahce yeah. and their, their basketball program. So uh, I thought I had a really good experience. And luckily there I played with like three other uh, Americans and like Kia Vaughn was there. She was my teammate from Washington and mm -hmm. in New York. And then Kia Stokes is there. She's my teammate from college. Uh, so I was, I was really comfortable there as far as uh, the other players I had around me. Um, and I was, we were just fortunate enough to win a championship last year, so that yeah. was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> last year I met with you um, during Fenerbahce EuroLeague game, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, on the court side. Yes. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. And, um, but, okay, but I will come back to that Fenerbahce topic, but okay. how was your rookie year in WNBA? Okay. Uh, rookie year, I, I did really well. I think I kind of came in, wasn't really much expectation. Um, I think one of the older players ended up getting hurt, so I got more opportunity yeah. to play. So, um... I think I was just kind of a kid just having fun in that moment and just trying to do my best. So I had like really good numbers and I was on the all rookie team that year. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations of that. Thank you. And um, so your rookie year with the Washington after New York and on the February 12th or the thir uh, 13th, you signed with Phoenix Mercury yes. this year. <laughs> yes. And now you're playing Galatasaray. Mm -hmm. So can we ba come back after Fenerbahce, you signed with Galatasaray. Mm -hmm. And then after New York Liberty, you signed with uh, Phoenix Mercury. Yeah. How has that changed? It's a lot of change. I exactly. think I'm starting <laughs> to get used to change. I used to not like change, but I think now just basketball in your career, you never know really where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. So um, I've learned to embrace change. I think Coming to Gala at first, I was just kind of hesitant, especially coming from, from Fenner. Fenerbahce. But um, talking with the coach at Gala, uh, uh, he's a great guy. I think we have a great relationship. But then Ishel Albin, she, I talked to her in the summer. A legend. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I always played against Ishel. I never played with her. So I thought it'd be a really cool opportunity to play with her. Mm -hmm. And um, definitely excited I came and excited to just. But were you getting any messages from Fenerbahce <laughs> fans? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, it's a tough decision because, uh, <laughs> you know, here I know it's a big rivalry and everything. It but is. at the, it's also a business in basketball. So it's like kind of how everything works out. And Gala was kind of uh, the best situation for me this year. And on the 14th of March, next week, you have this derby against <laughs> oh, Fenerbahce. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good luck Thanks. for that <laughs> <laughs> with the fans and with the, yeah. with the game. Luckily, it's home for us, so I'm excited to yeah. have a home game. <laughs> <laughs> and how was Ushila Alban as a teammate? She's good. She's, uh, she's really uh, relaxed, I think, um, especially in a game if I'm, like, getting on myself or I'm missing shots. She's always like, don't, don't worry, you got it, you got it. I think she's just kind of cool to be around like she's a great leader on the court so uh, i'm happy i get to play with her this yeah. year yeah and uh, do you have any funny memories with shalal ben Let that you think. want to oh i know one <laughs> <laughs> it was one game we played in kaiseri and uh my hands were cold i don't know why they were freezing <laughs> so she just comes and she's like her and tilbe are like warming up my hands on the court and i guess like the fans saw it and everyone was posting it on twitter <laughs> really? and they're like what's well, going on <laughs> But I'm like, my hands are freezing. The gym was so cold. <laughs> and I think I had to shoot free throws or something. Do you, so do you girls do that, that on, in, in the States? Just to make you... Yeah, like yeah, your hands okay. warm? Yeah. Uh, but the fans got it wrong. <laughs> they were just like, what is going on here? So it was funny. And the WNBA. How was, how was the organization comparing to EuroLeague or Europe? Um, it's good. It's, it's different. Um, just kind of the way the, the rules are set up. Like... Even when I got drafted, like your contract is for four years. Mm -hmm. So it was like I did three years at Washington and technically was traded. So New York picked up my yeah, contract yep. from them. Here, I think a lot of times in Europe, sometimes you see people sign two years, but most of the time it's just like year by year. So you Why? don't really know. Because of the money? Yeah, I think you never know how the money's going to be. So it could change each year. So I think people are just more comfortable yeah. with just one year. And well, it's a huge topic that I want to talk with you about WNBA salary cap. Mm -hmm. How do you see it now? Because um, there was a change. Yeah, so we, we had our new CBA, and I think uh, we're definitely making strides in the right direction. It's not mm -hmm. like where we want to end up. But I think some of the biggest things for us was just like uh, more money or more money available for players. I think also like we always say like we're a women's league. So I think like we had a, a lot more moms in the WNBA now. Exactly. So um, just different rules as far as like uh, they provide us with an apartment, but just like an extra bedroom. 
for them, mm -hmm. for my like for me specifically for, for yeah. my son. Um, just like uh, they have like child child care stipends because we would always say I never knew this, but I guess at NBA games they have like um, like a daycare for the okay. kids, okay. and I would always be like the moms can watch the kids. Like me, I'm playing, I can't yeah. watch them, so we need the daycare <laughs> more. <laughs> but um, definitely, they're just making adjustments for for stuff like that for our. But do you see it as a fair thing? Um, I think so. I think um, one thing we shouldn't do is like, no one thinks like we should be out here making the same as the men. We think like why? women's basketball is different. Just at the point it is right now. I think if you look back but, at men's but why? basketball. why? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I think it has to be fair enough yeah, yeah. to earn the same money, having the same organization, type of an organization mm -hmm. with the entertainment part of it, you That's know, true. with the fans included. You know, it has to be something similar, but yeah. it's not similar yeah, from no. my perspective. No, I agree. It's not. Um, I think we just h help that we can keep growing the game and have more fans and people to respect our game. I think some people, because we can't dunk or something like that, like mm -hmm. our game exactly. isn't as exciting. But I think um, if you watch women's basketball, you'll become a fan. Or if you come to the games, like I think people have a good time and that's how we get more fans every year. But do you hear this sentence as women basketball shouldn't exist? No. Have you ever heard that? I heard that. Really? Yeah. I, <laughs> I think that. I live in my basketball bubble <laughs> sometimes, so like I don't always see the negative comments, but... Um, it's a negative comment. Yeah, I think yeah. sometimes... I think when I did see it, though, was... Uh, I think Bleacher Report put something out about Skylar Diggins going to Phoenix. And I just kind of looked in the comments, and it was all this negative. And I was like, I didn't realize it was like that That's why negative I asked about you. women's basketball. I don't basketball. agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that. That's what I'm asking. You know, some people, well, there are some fans and some fans. Mm -hmm. Some fans want to see women basketball, men's volleyball, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's because it's a sport. It's included by any kind of gender right. that is playing a ball. Basketball, volleyball, right. doesn't matter. And it's, it's an entertainment thing, mm -hmm. you know? But th some of the fans are like, no, you know, I'm good with the men's basketball. Yeah. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think, uh, I think our game is really good. I think we have a lot of talented players. And yeah. I know a lot of them work really hard, just like the men work really hard. So I think mm -hmm. it should be uh, fair. And our game definitely demands more respect than people yeah. give it. And, um, you know, men are earning more money than women in mm -hmm. this industry. You think gender affects a lot? the situation? Absolutely. Um, I mean, everyone says men are faster, bigger, and stronger. So um, I think people just see that, that they can they can dunk, and they think that's more entertaining. But I think if you're really, like, a fan of basketball, you know, like, we have our own talents in our yeah. in our game as well. We have really good shooters. People, uh, girls are really fundamental, really skilled. So um, I think if you pay attention to the basketball skill, you can see that our game is really yeah. good as well. And how do you see this gap between women and men in Europe? Um, I think you see it kind of with the coverage of the games. I think you'll see um, the men's games. A lot of more fans are at their games than they are at ours. Uh, they're playing in bigger arenas, bigger gyms. Um, but I will say, I think in Europe, uh, especially in Turkey, you see like Fenerbahce fans and Gala fans. Like they have their own group of fans that follow them, like wherever yeah. they go. So uh, I'll say definitely in Turkey, I think they have really good fans and. Um, they really support whether it's men or women. Yeah, but I think organization has to do more PR on, mm -hmm. on women's basketball. That's, that's what I yeah. think. And um, so the French national team, <laughs> yeah, how is it going? You're also playing for the France. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really special. I started playing with them last year in November. Um, well, Just honestly, you have no time to rest. I'm thinking now. Right. Women, <laughs> women and WNBA here, Europe, the, yeah. <laughs> the Turkey, basketball. And then you have a son yes. that you're taking <laughs> care of and also the national team. So, yeah. Uh, I just figure it out, I guess, and I just bring, most of the time, bring Bryson with me wherever, wherever I go if I can. Um, but, yeah, with the, the national team, it's just, uh, I started playing with them in November, and I just kind of kept playing with them, kept learning or whatever, and then this year we played, uh, what, in February, we played and we were able to co qualify for the Olympics, yeah, so that's yeah. really exciting. February be, 9th. Yes, it'll <laughs> be my first Olympics, so I'm really excited for that. Um, I think it's just really a, a great experience playing with them. The girls are, are really nice. The coaches. Yeah. She coached me at Fenner last year, too. So um, I have a great relationship with her and a great relationship with um, everyone in the, the French Federation. So I'm just happy to be a part of it. But do they talk in English? No. Everything's in French. So the thing about me is, like, I can understand. I don't understand every word, but I can understand, like, most of the sentence. But then I 
don't respond in French yet. I'm practicing, but uh, I can understand it and respond in English. But during the game, they talk in French? Yeah. If it's something I don't understand, like the, the girls speak English, oh, okay. they might like okay. translate for me if I need it. But a lot of times, like I think I'm so used to the coach, even when she's speaking in French, I pretty much understand what she's trying to say. Okay. Like okay. basketball terms, I can understand yeah, pretty yeah. well. Off the court, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you are one of the most dominant guard in WNBA. And how do you see this Olympic Games against USA? Um, it's going to be tough. Um, obviously, USA, they have so much talent and some really good players. I think uh, the way European teams are able to compete with them is the fact that uh, we've been playing together for a lot longer. Yeah. Um, so I think now with the girls I've been playing with, it's been a year and a half, but even they've been playing together for maybe five, five, yeah. five to ten years together. So I think um, if we keep building our chemistry and we go out and fight really hard, we'll be able to compete with them. Okay, good luck Thank from you. now on. <laughs> I will watch. I will watch your game. And then after that Olympics, you're going to be here with me <laughs> yes. in, in that show. With the medal, hopefully. With, exactly. No, we're waiting for that. And so I told you, you know, Utsaniye means three seconds. Okay. It's coming from the violation rule. Okay. And um, so we have this game with ten questions. Every each answer has to be in three seconds. Three seconds. Okay. <laughs> Shall we start? Yes. All right. <laughs> First question, who was the point leader of last year's regular season in WNBA? Dang, uh, Elena Deladon. <laughs> I don't know, sorry. <laughs> no. I think she was this year. Brittany. Griner. Oh, Garner, yeah, okay. Griner. It's okay. The second one, who is the head coach of Washington Mystics? Mike Tebow. <laughs> there you go. Third one, before UConn, in which team was Geno Ariemma? In Italian, mm -hmm. I'll say that. Uh, working as an assistant coach. Working St. Joe's? Working as an assistant coach. Dang, I don't know. <laughs> St. Joseph's? No, <laughs> <Dang. laughs> University of Virginia Cavaliers. Oh, shoot, I did know that. It's okay, it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. All right, fourth one. We have now seven, seven more okay. questions, so relax, it's okay. In what year? Did Galatasaray women's basketball team win the FIBA Euro Cup championships? Uh, In what year? 2018? Exactly. Yes. True. <laughs> Good one. Okay, fifth one. Who is the head coach of Fenerbahce women's basketball team? Uh, what's his name? Lapina? Yeah, exactly. I don't know his first name. Yeah, no. yeah. Victor, Victor. Victor Lapina. Victor Lapina. La Pena. La Pena. Yeah. Sixth one. Right after Seattle Storms in Russia. Which team did Sue Bird play for? Spartak? <coughs> Russia? Did. Moscow. Dynamo uh, Moscow. Dynamo. Dynamo Moscow. Okay, it's fine. Seventh one. On 2016, who helped the Sparks to win their first WNBA Finals title since 2002 and won the MVP award? Candace Parker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a, that was that an was easy a good one. one. <laughs> good one. But I got that wrong. But I, but I added two <laughs> different questions. Right. So. <laughs> Eighth, who is the GM of Phoenix Mercury? <laughs> I forgot his name. It's okay. Jim Hetzman. Yes. Yeah, but you knew it. Yes. Okay. My questions are hard? No, no. They're okay. okay. I should know that one, though. All right. I just well, forgot. I just right. learned. You forgot. Like a couple <laughs> weeks ago, though. <laughs> exactly, a couple <laughs> weeks ago you learned, so it's fine. Nine, two more questions. So, which team was the WNBA champions of 2019? Last year. Last year? Last year? <laughs> Not Minnesota. Mystic. Well, <laughs> this one, um, I'm thinking I mean like this last year. year. Yeah, not the 2018. Okay, this year, gotcha, That's my gotcha. Bad. No, you're good. Okay. All right, Washington Mystics. Um, Tenth one. This is this question is I think um, one of my best, not one of my, the best question I've ever wrote down mm -hmm. for this show. Who is playing in Mamba Baller's team and will be a forever MVP in women's basketball history? Uh, Gigi Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank it's you. not that bad. <laughs> You're looking at me like I hate to see how I did terrible. <laughs> did you you didn't like this game? No, no, I like it. Okay, all <laughs> right. I'm just competitive. I want to get everyone <laughs> right. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. So um, for the last things, how was now this year you're playing in Galatasaray mm -hmm. for the l next seasons? How where do you see yourself? 
Um, other than WNBA? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, I just take it year by year and just figure out. Normally, I try to figure out what I'm going to do next year uh, for the summer. Uh, it has been a really busy year as far as basketball, so I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll take some time off and really? spend time with my son. For just probably until January next year. But next year. So yeah. it means that you're not going to play uh, probably overseas? If I can, like a half season, like if a team mm -hmm. needs another player, I'll probably join. But I don't know if I'll come, especially like with the WNBA and the Olympics this summer. Yeah. I think maybe I'll take yeah, a couple months off. Yeah, it's going to be off. tough. So Bryson is going to turn into four years old, right? Yeah, he next just turned three. He just turned three. Yeah, January. Okay. So. And um, I'm, I'm very curious. Being a female, being a mother, being a player, basketball player, do you have any message to your to the young ladies, young ladies who wants to become as a basketball player, as um, a powerful woman? I think for sure, just always believe in yourself. Um, I think, like you see, some people don't necessarily support women's basketball. Even as a player, people are always going to tell you what you can't do. But I think as long as you always believe in yourself and believe in your ability, uh, you'll be fine. I think. As long as I think I always said that I worked hard every day, so I know like I'm working hard and whatever I'm doing, like it's all gonna pay off in the end. So what anyone else says to me doesn't really matter. But can you explain me one of your days? Can you tell me? Just give me an example of a day. What do you do when you wake up with the Bryce? <laughs> well, he's not with you right not now. Here, right? He's yeah, in yeah. New York. So what do you do but with him? When he's with me, uh, normally in the states, like I'll wake up, um, probably uh, make us breakfast or whatever, and then. I go to practice. Uh, when I was in New York, my cousin was helping me. She actually lived down the street, so she would come in the morning and she would uh, watch Bryson. And I would go to practice probably for, we practice probably like from like 10.30 to maybe like two. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd probably come back home and my cousin will probably just hang out normally. Like I was living in Brooklyn at the time, so we'll go to the park with Bryson and, and do different things like that. And then just rest. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a tough life. Yeah. Really, that's a tough <laughs> life. And, um, oh, and I have one more question from my follower that he wants me okay. to ask you. Uh, three favorite players of yours who are playing in EuroLeague men. EuroLeague men. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, I watch the Fenner guys a lot. <laughs> we have... In Turkey, we have another team called Anadolu uh, Yeah, no. <laughs> There's an American player. I mean, I like Who's Shane. the MVP? <laughs> exactly. I like Shane. He, no, Shane's really good. He's super fast. I watched him since he was he's, playing in college. So I, I know. He's so fast. He's so fast. Court, like, and I actually watched him play Asheville in person this year. So that was like uh -huh. my first time seeing him play in person in Europe. So uh, he's really good. Uh, are we naming Shane? I like Slukas, too. Yeah, yeah, we're naming Shane. I like Slukas, though. And he's, he's really good. Do you well. like his lately performance? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like Fenner hasn't been playing as well as we're used to this year, but I uh, still think they'll be all right. I think they will be on Final Four. Yeah. I really, they're, I have They're no definitely doubt. good enough. Yeah. They're, they're, they're great. Yeah. I think they Some come problems. together yeah. in the right time. Yeah. That's all that really matters. Yeah. Okay. Who Last else? one. Let's say out of Turkey. Out of Turkey. Do you want me to give you some names? Well, I, w I watched uh, Panthenikos play, and uh, well, I remember Jim Rifferdet. The game I watched, he uh -huh. just he was he's making everything. Yeah, so yeah. he's a great shooter, so I like him too. There's Mike James. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sergio <laughs> Rodriguez. <laughs> like Amy. Yeah, but there are a lot of great guys. But mm -hmm. okay, so say it again for, for him. Um, Shane Larkin, Slukas, and Jim Rifferdet. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. Bria, thank you for coming to our show. Do you have any message um, to basketball fans? Just watch our game this weekend against Fenerbahce. Uh, root for Gala, though. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be a really good game. Yeah. <laughs> and last quote, um, Esport 2 is a broadcaster and right holder of WNBA. And for, for the summertime, people can watch you. Yes, watch me with the Phoenix Mercury this summer. <laughs> I think we're going to have a really good team, and hopefully we can win a championship. Yeah, good luck. Good Thank luck you. with that. Good <laughs> luck with everything. And, and for the next time, it's going to be 10 out of 10. Okay. Okay. Yes, I got you. I, I, yeah, you got, <laughs> I got me. You. All right. Thank you coming for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Değerli sport izleyenleri, haftaya yeni bir 3 saniye programında görüşmek dileğiyle. Hoşçakalın.